Hey guys, welcome back to the game room. Today's the first for the channel as I'm going to be doing our first Kickstarter preview. That preview is going to be over Oddball Aeronauts Pirates vs. Pendragons by Maverick Muse Games. Now, since this is our first Kickstarter preview, I thought I'd set a few ground rules as far as what to expect from previews from the channel. First off, uh, this is going to be a review as well. This is I'm calling it a preview because the game isn't out, actually out yet, obviously. It's in Kickstarter, it has been funded, it's in its final week, so it's going to get made. But the game itself, this is a pre-production copy, a print-and-play copy. Uh, as you get closer, you'll probably see the quality of it, but it's a high-quality print-and-play, and it's the same artwork that are on the review copies that are out there, so it still looks good. But as far as reviews go, for Kickstarters, this one and in the future, we will be reviewing the game as well as showing you the, the existing components with the caveat that obviously the game itself isn't final. Most games I'm going to be reviewing on this are going to be close to the final rules, if not the exact final rules. But the art and things like that, the art and components, usually are going to not be final. They're just going to be production quality or demos that they're getting out to reviewers. So uh, just as an aside, that's what to expect there. Now what you also need to expect are my honest opinions about the game itself because obviously I'm not going to make this just a commercial for a game. I am trying to uh, get information out there about games that are coming out though. So I, I do want to get you information, but I want to get you my opinion as well and give you an honest review of the game as well, the review that I have in hand. So let's take a look at Oddball Aeronauts. I'll show you the components that we have, uh, show you a bit of the gameplay, and uh, I'll give you my opinion on it. So here are the components to Oddball Aeronauts. You have the deck of pirates and the deck of pendragons and these event cards. There are six different event cards in the base game. Uh, at the beginning of the game, you'll shuffle them together. Each deck gets two, and you'll just have two extras to set aside. You won't be using those. Uh, so the deck has 24 cards plus the two event cards to make it 26. Now, the real novelty of this game is, unlike games like uh, Magic Gathering or card games in general where you have the deck face down, you shuffle it up, and you draw a hand of cards, your cards are always in your hand. You don't actually have to have a playing surface. So you can literally play this game anywhere you are as long as you have one hand free. Uh, now the goal of the game is to essentially discard all of your opponent's cards while keeping some cards alive for yourself. The way you discard cards is you take a card and you'll flip it behind like this and slide it back here. And you'll do that via a few different methods. Uh, let's go through the actual anatomy of a card. First off, the art. Uh, like I said, it's not all final, but a lot of this art on the actual characters is fairly far along in the process or final. And uh, it's really cool. I really like the anthropomorphic animals like in uh, uh, Mice and Mystics and things like that where they're animals with weaponry. Uh, it's a really cool little theme, kind of a steampunky animal theme, so nice little melding of worlds there. Now the cards themselves, you have these stat lines on the left hand side here. As you see, you have a little steering wheel, that's sailing. The cannons are cannons, or the cannonballs are cannons, and the sword is boarding. You'll have two numbers next to them as well. You'll have a bigger number over here and then a plus next to them. So during the game, uh, at the beginning of the round, each starting with the first player, you'll choose a skill. You'll either choose sailing, cannons, or boarding. Uh, here, down here is a trick. We'll go through those in a second. Uh, but essentially, what happens is you decide what skill you're going to do, and then simul the other player chooses their skill, and then you'll simultaneously bid the amount of cards you want to play. So Every round, beginning of the round, you'll always look at the top three cards, because you can play up to three cards, and you'll kind of see which skills you have, what's, what the numbers are in each of these. If there's an event in the top three, we'll look at that in a moment, uh, but you essentially play the event and then it continues the turn. Uh, but you'll look at the stats and kind of get an idea of what you're best at this turn. So looking at the cannoneers, you have a five in cannons, obviously you're best at cannons. And back here you'll see these pluses, that's when the backup cards come into play. The top card is going to be your main card, you'll use the big number here. The ones behind it are going to be supporting it with their little pluses. So if I chose cannons, I'd have a 5 from the top, a plus 2 from the next card, and a plus 3 from the last card there. So I would have a total of 10 if I chose to play all 3. So I can bid all three cards on cannons and hope that I get discards. And make my opponent discard, because once you win in a specific... Uh, category you'll do the effect. Sailing you'll get to recover cards which is if you have cards in the back here that have been discarded face down like I said you get to go through here and recover them like that so you get to essentially add discarded cards back to your deck. Uh, cannons make your opponent discard two cards and then boarding does one of each. It lets you recover one and makes your opponent discard one. 
So let's go through a sample turn here. So I have the cannoneers, and I see that my backup here it's going to give me a ten if I bid all three on guns. So I'm a secret. We're going to choose cannons. We're going to choose guns. My opponent, the pin dragons, here looks at their top three, and uh, we'll have an event. We'll look at that in a moment. <laughs> So we look at this top one, it's pretty basic, it's a 3-3-3, solid in a lot of things. And then you see this back up here, that's a really good one, that's going to be their captain. So they have plus 5 in pretty much whatever they want there. And the next one is a support one, as you can see they have zeros on a lot of the main stats. So it has the leading card, it's not the best, but as a support, plus 4 is really solid. So really, they have the pick of the litter, they can go, uh, well maybe I want to do cannons as well. So they have a 3 plus 5 plus 4. Total, they have a 12. So they don't know I'm going to bid 3. I don't know what they're going to bid. They might think since I chose cannons that I have a pretty good number there. So maybe they decide that they want to bid 3. So we do the rock, paper, scissors, shoot. And we both decide we're going to play 3 at the same time. So the 12 over here beats my 12 on guns. So what happens is their effect wins. They, they chose guns, so their effect goes into play. Now each player has to discard the cards that they played, these top three here, go to the back of my deck, and then I have to lose two cards. So that's five cards total that I have to discard to the back of my deck. Now the pin dragons don't get off unscathed, they actually do have to lose cards, they have to lose the three that they played. So it's kind of a risk reward system, you have to manage the amount of cards that you play. You want to play as many as possible because, hey, that gives you the best chance of winning. But then at the same time, if you play too many too often, you're going to be losing cards at a really fast rate. And if you happen to lose one of those big bets, you're in trouble because then you might be losing a lot more cards. So let's take a look at an event here. And on the event, you'll have just a very simple comparison here. It's just, in this case, it's highest cannons and then the trick effect, which is what the highest cannons get. So in this case, whoever has the highest cannons gets to use the skill bonuses of either sailing or cannon. So they essentially get to choose their skills instead of having to be locked into one or the other. So you would just compare the top card, in this case, not all three of them. And as you can see, cannons, six over here. So the pin dragons would be able to get that effect, which the that would give them a lot of flexibility. The event card would then get discarded to the bottom of their deck. Now you do events when only one person has an event in the top three cards. That's why you do the. That's one of the reasons you do the fanning at the beginning. You have to look at the top three. If either player has one event, you do the event. If both players have an event, you can't have two events triggered in the same turn. So both players would just discard that event in their top three and continue the turn like normal. And really, that's that's what happens. That's how the turn goes. You always you just look at the top three, decide which skill you want to use. First player just chooses out loud. Second player chooses theirs out loud. And then you continue. Now the other two skills are going to be coming into play much more often during the middle and late game and become very important. Sailing lets you recover cards, which, like I said, go back here and flip them face up. The most recent ones discarded, or excuse me, the oldest ones discarded, the exact opposite. Uh, they're starting to stick together, sorry. So you just flip them face over. And the boarding lets you do one discard for them and one recover on yourself. Uh, it just goes on and on like that. Now the tricks have a little bit of an extra edge as well. You can't use tricks from any of the support guys, so if you bid three, I couldn't do any of these tricks. But this top trick I can do, if I win, recover one card. And there's a lot of effects like that. So as you can see, these guys are good at sailing, so you'd probably bid sailing on these guys. So if you win the sailing, you get to recover two, plus you get to recover a card with that trick. So. There's a lot of interesting little uh, tricks like that. You have the tricks that will give you pluses in defense if you chose cannons and your opponent and your opponent shows like maybe sailing or boarding, or you get uh, to choose different abilities, or you even get to limit your opponent's card plays during the next turn to two cards. There's a lot of different little intricacies, and the fact that you can only play those tricks if they're the top card of your deck it adds another layer to the bidding because you're having to say, well, maybe I want to use this guy's trick down here to recover two cards. It's a very strong trick, but maybe I want to use their bonus. So, I don't know. Maybe I want to use all three of these cards to get down to that, but maybe I don't want to use all three because I want to use this trick instead. So, it, it's a matter of resource management in a very, very simple and elegant way. The fact that you can do all this, all this strategy, all these uh, gameplay elements, in literally in the palm of your hand, anywhere you want to take this deck, as long as you have a free hand you can play this game, there's a lot of choice and a lot of bluffing and a lot of strategy that goes into a fairly simple card game. 
Uh, let me give you my final opinions on it here. Uh, pretty much that's that's all the rules there are to it. It's it's fairly simple. Uh, and I'll give you my opinions and see if you want to back it yourself. So guys, that is Oddball Aeronauts. When I first saw the game, I was a little worried that it would be kind of a gimmick with the handheld nature, and it would the gameplay would just be really light fair with can the rock, paper, scissors mechanism of cannons beating guns, beating boarding, or something like that. And boy, I was completely wrong with that. The Wrong with some of the aspects there. It is a very light game, very easy to play. It takes about 15 or 20 minutes at most. But there's so many different choices that you can make with such a limited amount of components. You have three options every card, plus tricks, plus the bluffing mechanism of choosing one, two, or three cards to play. And the fact that you can always see what's coming up, and there's so much to the actual bit bidding mechanism where you're having to not only strategize for this turn, but later turns, and manage your resources. There is so much going on in 26 cards, I, I can't believe it. I, I, I'm really sad that it took me this long to actually print it out and play it, and I'm really happy that I did, because this is a revelation for me. I, I really think this is going to be one of my favorite games of the year. It's very early in the year, but uh, I know it's going to be one of my most played games of the year, just because of how transportable it is. I've talked about uh, games in the past, this past year especially, where they're getting plus marks from me because they're easy to carry. Not only is this easy to carry, it's easy to play while you're carrying. You can literally play this anywhere. You can sit on the bus and play it. You don't need a table surface, which is enormous. I think this is going to be a possibly new trend in games because no playing surface is just bonkers for games. And that's where a lot of games are actually losing the market to iOS and things like that because people can just sit in the car and play it or sit on a bus and play it. Just be, be remote playing a board game. With Oddball Aeronauts, you can be anywhere. I, I'm going to be taking this to the laundromat, to the store. This is this is going everywhere with me. I'm just going to have a card box on me at all times with this game in it. So guys, I highly, highly recommend Oddball Aeronauts. I will throw the link to their Kickstarter up here, and I'll have one in the description below as well. It's going to be going on for another week here. Uh, definitely, definitely get on board. For the price, it is in pounds. It's, I think it's about $25, so it'll be a little bit more than that uh, conversion-wise. But... Uh, they're doing international shipping. They're, it's a very international friendly uh, Kickstarter, and I can't recommend it enough. If you miss out on the Kickstarter somehow, if you're seeing this later, uh, I seriously hope that you can find it in retail stores at this point. Uh, I think this is going to be a really successful Kickstarter, and I think this is going to be a really successful game in general. There's no reason for you not to be backing Oddball Aeronauts. Thanks for joining me for the preview of Oddball Aeronauts, our first Kickstarter preview. I wanted to thank uh, my fiance Sarah for printing out these awesome cards. This is all on cardstock quality uh, for print and play. This definitely didn't come out like a print and play, and I'm going to be using this copy until I get my actual uh, physical copy from the Kickstarter itself. I want to thank the guys from uh, Maverick Muse for actually letting me get access to the print and play copy so I can actually review it, and uh, I hope you guys can go back it. Also, you can also visit us on Twitter at WG Tabletop and on Facebook at Weapons Great Channel. And we'll be doing more previews like this in the future, so definitely subscribe on the channel. More reviews are to come, and we look forward to seeing you next time in the game room.